Hello everybody. Today we are on an important mission with a very important person. Today we have with us Mohit Agrawal. And Mohit is an amazing scholar, amazing person, and he has done a lot of hard work to get his PhD. He has studied his bachelor's from Punjab University, Chandigarh, where a lot of great people, Kalpana Chawla, Manmohan Singh, and all have studied, Bhagat Singh. And he's done his master's from NIT, Trichy. And now he has completed his PhD from IIT Bhuvaneshwar. He has an amazing list of journal papers that he has submitted and they are in the link below. He's Google Scholar and other profiles. But most importantly, he's so kind and generous that he's agreed today to help all of you. He's agreed to share his knowledge about the process of PhD, about things which you will not know until you are in the grind of it. These are things to prepare you, to help you. This is part of our important research podcast and we have with us Mohit. Mohit, how are you today? Great, Raja. How are you? So we were batchmates in NIT Trichy. Absolutely. <laughs> Since and... we, are, we are meeting for the first time. Uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And the first time is a good first time. Yeah. So, well, uh, just to give you, you know, people an idea, what is this PhD program all about and who can do a PhD? Uh, so, uh, tell us something about PhD, you know, just to start off the conversation. So, PhD, uh, so we do research. We find solutions for the community, especially the lower middle class and the poor so that their life can be better. See, right. if we are rich, there is no global warming for us. Hmm. We have ACs. Wow. Outside, kitna bhi temperature ho jai, 50, 60. We have 24 degree, 18 degree Celsius inside. Right. And it doesn't matter how cold it is outside, we have heaters. Right. If we are rich. But right. if it is the poor who experience global warming, climate right. change, drought, food rise, price rises. Right. So we do research to help our uh, poor section of the societies. Yeah. Wow, 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 wow. So up, Mala, I'll start with a very uh, uh, conceptual question. Is yeah. research underrated in India? Mala, uh, I think, you know, US may there's a lot of research funding, research this, research that. But is research underrated in the country as far as, uh, you know, the government's focus is concerned, the funding is concerned? All those things. So, if it is such an important thing for the middle class, is it underrated in this country? What do you think about it? I would not say research is underrated. I would say research is ignored in India. Okay. Okay. That's and, a strong word. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Many people say that the research funding that India gets is very less. Yeah. Compared to other countries. But I say it is too much. Oh. For the quality of research that we are doing. Right. All of our institutes are doing. Right. You will say, "Itna bhi kyu mil raha inko?" Oh, okay. Yeah, I think apart from few organizations, uh, especially ISRO, we can you name other uh, you know research institute in India that can like make you proud? IIT, you your institute, IIT, is it not making us proud enough? But, yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> but if you see the actual research that right. happens on the paper and the and the outcome of it, what have we achieved with the money that we have received? We need to revamp our re our research structure. Right. Just simply giving money is not the solution. Right. So if the research structure is properly revamped, right, then definitely we can. We should be actually uh, more deserving about like research funds rather than just get the fund and do the research. Right. Samaj, yeah. So with that in context, you know, since this is for a person who wants to do PhD, mm -hmm. should one do PhD in India or abroad? This is a question that you have also heard many times. This is a question that people ask us all the time. This is the question, you know, NIT Hamirpur recently has in the notification for recruitment said preference may be given to people who have studied abroad. So my question is, should one do PhD in India or should one do PhD abroad? 
see if you don't have any family responsibility please go ahead for a couple of years experience the research outside then come back to india apply for jobs but yeah that is there uh, many nits they prefer people who have research experience abroad and even many iits also prefer this so yeah but uh, there are some you see there are both like pros and cons uh, some nits and iits will have only offline interviews mm. so if you are in abroad you cannot come at a at a week's notice week notice spending lakhs of rupees on flight tickets and then attending then again going back then maybe next month you have another interview mm. how will you manage it if you are in india you can just plan a trip for couple of days three days and come back so both are there pros and cons of course people who are who have done their uh, phd from abroad are preferred but are they available okay got it got it because interview. of course yes and uh, uh... as far as studying abroad is concerned doing phd abroad is concerned as you have put a very valid point one is about coming back to india for the interview second is that people wa- might want to settle and do their postdocs and further research abroad if they go for a phd abroad that is an yeah, important absolutely. point to consider right absolutely, yeah, absolutely. you should be uh, we should have this uh, like this flexibility that we can stay abroad very nice very nice very nice so now coming back to desi questions for our desi people what should a student in india look for in an institute to do a phd this is part of the two questions that i'm going to ask regarding the institute so pehla question hai ki what is that one student should be looking for when they want to do phd in an institute in india so there is no right answer for this so everybody has their own opinion Mm-hmm. in my opinion uh, the supervisor is the most important criteria Why? institute is the second okay so if the for us phd people institute means nothing we mm-hmm. are not part of an institute we are part of a supervisor's lab okay so that's i think the most important thing yeah some other people might say institute is important because ultimately in your cv the institute name is written right correct so, correct correct so is my second question of course coming to the just what you just said ki what should one choose should we choose institute tag or we should choose the faculty and the facility now faculty you already tried to answer but facility is an important question that we have to ask so institute tag versus institute facility and faculty what should one choose that's a tough one so i think again here faculty is more important if you we can always look for the faculty's profile so what is their achievement mm-hmm. in the research world mm-hmm. and how many students have they uh, awarded the de- degree mm-hmm. and what are those students doing right now mm-hmm. so if they are doing like great mm. if they are doing like if they got a job after mm-hmm. phd instantly or they are doing postdoc in a very good college then mm-hmm. of course you should be ready to take that guide it's a no brainer but if you see the on the profile that their students profile is not that great right they don't have many papers they are not placed yet then i guess it's a very dicey situation it's a risk it's like trading in the stock in the stock market you don't know what you are going to get then then if if the supervisors is not you know tried and tested has not does not have a like a stamp profile then i think the institute name will be a you know a, a saving grace maybe uh, in some jobs and in some uh, you know institutions mm. they just see the institute name mm. from where you are for it so so i think in that case uh, but i think still think the supervisor is your number one bet you okay. should definitely choose the institute based on supervisors the facilities need not be there but if you can see the students have done well the right. supervisor student have done well it means they are given whatever they need got it got it so now the very important formula question formula question is you know once my one 
coordinator who told me i'll not name him he said ki raja singh there are three types of guides mm. so he said raja singh if the guide is intellectual and not cooperative don't select him then he said if the guide is not intellectual but cooperative chal jayega mm. and then mm. he said raja singh if the guide is cooperative and intellectual then there's only one like me <laughs> he said about himself <laughs> and he should choose that but what he wanted to say is that it's just not about intellect it's just not about the capability as far as research is concerned phd also involves everyday humdrum affairs like taking leaves like getting stipend like you know uh, having time time management what time to go having a work life balance all these things are also important parts of a phd student's life it's not just about mm-hmm. ki what is the intellectual intellect level so tell me about that part and you know please free free ki sab kuch khul ke bol do is matlab this is what people actually want to listen to so i think uh, the most important thing that we should look in a supervisor is first of all where will you be after your 5 years okay 5 years we can still manage it can be tough it can be rough but our main goal is to see ourselves beyond those 5 years right i know i know a lot of uh, uh, students who had a great guide right. very chill takes them for dinner every month okay <laughs> jokes with them a lot right gives them whatever resources they need but they are after 5 years they are nowhere got it unfortunately got it and there are some students whose guide was very strict right i have often seen them cry right but now they are happy got it and now everything is forgiven got it got it got it i think that is the number one thing that is the most important thing second is you should have some coping mechanism to deal with the stress stress will always come right it is inevitable it's like hunger right if you feel hungry every day similarly you will feel stress every right. day you should be able to manage and you are a grown up man or a woman by the time you are doing phd you should have sorted out by this time how you are going to deal with stress and if you ask me what is the ideal guide i would always say uh, your friend's guide is the, always the ideal guide Sorry. except our guide every guide seems ideal understood and <laughs> so there is no such thing as uh, you know best guide sometimes i feel my i i felt my guide is like my mother right and sometimes we'll, there's no worse person than her than her so it. it's always day to day stuff and overall i'm really happy because she made me the scholar that i am right got it thank you that's a very <laughs> very thorough answer to that question in a way that you covered it fully and you know i'm hope uh, i'm really really hoping that everybody listening to this will get the essence of it that we have to see that there is maybe some pain but it's for tomorrow's gain so yeah <laughs> so now you know you talk, you've spoken about what are you doing after 5 years so that comes to an important question we come to an important question ki besides teaching what is the other scope for phd after phd for phd graduates in india okay uh, so i would reframe the question the most important thing that we can do is research teaching is actually a very small part of our you know our future right so because the the biggest skill that we have learned in our phd is research skills right teaching is optional for us in many iits they don't even offer teaching courses courses to their students right so except after research you right. can always go to the industries right especially if you are in the csc electrical electronic branch right there are a lot of industries uh, who are actively hiring researchers right google microsoft they are always trying to compete with each other who gets the best researchers right so at their next mobile launch or a windows launch or an iphone launch they can uh, clog their technologies you know right. we got this feature now we got this feature right so industry is a huge thing and you will get more money in industry remember right pay to academia right yeah these are the two main things everything else covers in these two only right 
understood absolutely so yeah, and, uh, yeah there's one more thing uh, entrepreneurship right. if right. you think like you have done a, a extremely good research work mm-hmm. and you have developed the product that is sellable then you can definitely go for entrepreneurship as well very nice brilliant absolutely uh that's a uh, so you know that's a lot of options available for people after phd and you said research is the most important and research is what eventually will lead you to entrepreneurship will lead you to a good teaching position and will lead you everything else including working for big uh, com- big industrial uh, big industries etc now there's one part of phd which a lot of people struggle with on the other hand you for example have accomplished being in an iit and accomplished a lot of good publications tell us about where all you have published because that's very important for people to know i'm sure you published in all quarter 1 you know amazing journals with very high uh, impact factors and other things which are indexes for research pub journals in in the world but my question is how to submit paper to a journal now, you know you know you what points to be kept in mind and very important related question should papers be submitted for the sake of finishing phd or they should be you know like you should wait long enough to get very good results and something extraordinary so what is the balance between practical and the ideal please tell us about it. so if you have to earn money be practical if you want to daydream be ideal <laughs> the other thing yeah so it's always a very conflicting thing like like for everyone uh, right should be uh, cont- should we be believe in our work give right. it time or right. we have to go by the deadline right so i think it's a mixture of both for it there are some projects that i believed in and i extended the time and i saw them through the end right and there was something i had to finish by deadline right so we we have to see everything right we cannot uh, extend beyond five years it's, it's like very risky it's not good when you are going for the interviews so yeah if, if you go by the deadline i think it's much safer thing than to oh. go and believe in yourself luckily in my cases whenever i have taken the risk of believing in my work and extending the time it has paid it has paid me well but that's have, not a guarantee for everybody yeah yeah that's why i said i am very lucky lucky so, so 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 like you said about impact factor introduce the thing about impact factor so the higher the number of impact the higher the number the higher the value the more reputed the journalist right so i was i remember uh, i was supposed to submit a paper in a six impact factor journal by the deadline uh, so i said no, no i don't i want to take maybe 6 7 months more and i want to publish in a 12 impact factor right so after few disagreements i finally got my wish i finally got my wish and and luckily it got accepted in 12 that impact factor but it's not guarantee it's a risk that you have to take so yeah it, so sometimes it. you can finish by the deadline sometime you can like risk it It, it it should be balanced uh, but i would recommend get few papers in initially then at the end you can go for the no, risk so first you should do the bare minimum is what you're saying yes. so that yes. you are on the safe harbor and then you should go for the risk so that at yes, least definitely. your phd gets over on time yes yes for it for it for it and what you know things uh, should be kept in mind because you know in the process of submitting papers there's lot of failure you yeah. can agree with this because i, I you are i think you are a person who got a uh, published in many good journals but even i'm sure you would have faced rejections by some journals at least at some point so yeah, what yeah, yeah. should we do when we because you know you prepare so hard months and then the journal writes only a small little email in one paragraph and says okay thank you we are not publishing this is not within scope or something like that how do you deal with that situation so if it comes to dealing with failures i would like the day i get like paper rejections right. i celebrate 
I make sure to party hard that day okay. with my friends. Okay. So if you party, then you just realize that you know this is just a temporary thing. Right. Sooner or later, this paper will get accepted. Right. There is no paper in this world that has never got uh, a rejection. There is and has never been accepted in the future. Right. Eventually, all paper gets accepted. So it right. is part. And like when I see a failure, I said, okay. So, I am one step closer to acceptance. Right. Got it. Many people get this thing, especially when they get rejection in the initial phase of their research, that they feel this that I am no good, my paper is no good. How will I ever get a PhD if all my paper gets rejecting? So yeah, that is there, but it is just a phase. It is not something that will be with you till the end. Got it. Very nice. So, uh, you've told us a lot about the how to select a guide. You've told us about institute, tag versus uh, facility faculty. You've told us about uh, the paper journal submission process. I want to, and you also told us about the research status in India and whether to go abroad or to stay in India. But I want to particularly ask you if there is one thing you could change, if there's one message you could give to researchers, what will that be? Or message to the government also for that factor. You know, this is your time. So if you want to give a message, what will that message be? So the people who are doing research or they are about to get into the research? About to get into research. Okay. Uh, it is not that difficult as people say it is. Trust me. Right. I have done B I have done PhD. I have completed PhD. So I'm right. telling this from experience. Yes. It is not as hard. PhD is hard. I'm not saying it is not hard. But compared to the alternatives, it is much easy. Right. You know, if you the alternative to do PhD is to take a job in a right. corporate sector. Right. In a city. Yes. Compared to that, it is much easy. Right. We don't have to travel three hours in the traffic. <laughs> 10 minutes walking distance is our department yes we get two tea breaks right we don't have to ask for anybody to go for tea breaks right we can wear any clothes we want we don't right. have to have iron shirt and proper formal shoes <laughs> yes <laughs> and we don't have hard deadlines our salary uh, we don't have income tax yes Ten one six. And uh, so, you know, some section of the income tax act. Yes, stipend is not covered as yes. income. It's it's a non-taxable part. Yes, it's amazing. Actually, the only field in the world where CTC is equal to enhanced salary. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. So there are a lot of perks, and you can have a balance with your personal life and your like academic life. You can definitely have balance. In fact, I don't think any person who spend their entire day in the lab even if they do spend just check their laptop what they are doing half of the time it will be netflix got it <laughs> right so thank you so much mohit and you know you have shared a lot of insights from your experience uh, while doing phd from a very renowned institute that's iit iit bhuvneshwar you have completed your phd from and i'm sure anybody listening to this podcast is going to learn at least some form of initial guidance that you have provided to them. With that, I really, really want to thank you for taking time out today and sharing you. your valuable insight. Thank you so much, Mohit. I'm sure everybody is going to keep tuning to this podcast on research in India. Mohit, if you can tell people to subscribe for the built, I'll be very grateful. So guys, like, share and subscribe if you like this video. Thank you so much.